Hi guys, I hope you all are doing well and welcome to the next video of this entire series of Exchange Server 2019. In the last video, we installed Let's Encrypt SSL certificate on Exchange Server 2019. In this particular video, we will understand what is a smart host or SMTP smart host. Why do we need a smart host for our exchange organization? And we will set up Exchange Online Protection or EOP as a smart host for our on-premise exchange organization. In nutshell, a smart host is a server that sits between the email sender server and the recipient email server. Any email that is sent from the sender server, it is first delivered on the smart host. Smart host filters that email or applies the policies and then it delivers that email to the recipient email server. A smart host is always considered to be safe because it requires authentication of the sender to validate if the email sender is a valid sender or not. Now the question arises, we can send emails from our exchange server as well. So why do we need a smart host for the exchange server? You need a smart host if you need a better email hygiene solution for your on-premise emails environment. If the on-premise exchange server anti-spam or anti-malware agents are not solving your purpose for email hygiene, in that case, you can use a third-party email filtering service as a smart host. Because third-party email filtering services provide more advanced features and techniques to fight malicious emails if you compare it with on-premise exchange server. You need a smart host if your on-premise exchange server is running on a bad reputation IP address and the recipient email servers are not accepting your emails because of the bad reputation IP being used to send those emails. There are multiple email hygiene solutions available that you can use as a smart host for your on-premise exchange server. Some of the examples are Barracuda, EOP, SendGrid, or Socket Labs. In this demo, we will set up EOP or Exchange Online Protection as a smart host for our on-premise exchange server. When you set up EOP as a smart host for your on-premise exchange server, any email that you receive from the internet, that email will be delivered to the EOP first. EOP will scan that email, it will apply the policies, and if this email is passed from the checks, this will be delivered to your on-premise exchange organization. Same way, if you send an email to the internet, that email will first go to EOP. It will apply outbound spam filter policies on that email, and then this email will be delivered to the recipient email server. But any email that you send among internal users, that email will be processed and delivered by on-premise exchange server itself. Now let's talk about the prerequisites. Those are required to be met before you start using EOP as a smart host for your on-premise exchange organization. First, you need to sign up for an Office 365 tenant. You will get a free subscription for Office 365 tenant for first 30 days, and EOP is enabled by default with every Office 365 tenant. Make sure that external inbound and outbound email flow is working for your on-premise exchange organization. If you do not have a custom domain, purchase a custom domain from domain provider and verify that domain in Office 365 tenant. And remember, this domain name must match the domain that you have in your on-premise organization. Once you have verified the domain in Office 365, the next step is to synchronize on-premise users to Office 365. If you do not have much users in your on-premise organization or you do not want to deploy Azure AD Connect server, in that case, you can create mail user accounts manually in Exchange Online for your on-premise mailboxes. Then you need to create two Mailflow connectors in EOP. One connector will be inbound connector that will receive emails from the on-premise exchange. And the second connector will be outbound connector that will send emails to your on-premise exchange organization. We will point MX record for our domain to EOP so that all inbound external emails are routed to EOP first so that EOP can filter these emails and then route 
those emails to on-premise exchange organization with the help of outbound connector. And finally, you need to create a send connector in on-premise exchange server that will send all the external emails to EOP. To receive emails from EOP, you do not have to create a receive connector. The default front-end receive connector is sufficient to receive emails from EOP. So let's move to our lab. I already have one Office 365 tenant and the domain office365concepts.com is already verified on this tenant. This is the same domain that I'm using in my on-premise organization. So as of now, I have added only TXT record in my public DNS to verify this domain. I haven't added MX or SPF or auto discover record. So I have the tenant, the domain is added. The next prerequisite is we need to verify if on-premise external inbound and outbound email flow is working or not. So for that, you can go to remote connectivity analyzer tool, select exchange server, and let's test inbound SMTP email flow first. Here you can type the email address of any on-premise mailbox. When I say on-premise, that is on-premise exchange server. So let's run this test, click verify, perform test. So the test is passed successfully. That means we are able to receive emails from internet. Now let's check the outbound email flow. So here you will type the IP address, your external IP address that your exchange server is using. Paste it here. And here type the email address of on-premise mailbox. You can use any email address that is available in on-premise exchange server, perform test. So the outbound test is passed as well. So that means exchange server can send emails to internet. The third prerequisite is we need to create mail users. It depends on your requirement. If you have multiple users in your on-premise exchange organization, you can deploy a server for Azure AD Connect. If you do not have much users in your exchange server, in that case, you can directly go to Exchange Admin Center and uh, you can create mail users. For, for your on-premise mailboxes. To create a mail user, you can click on add a contact. From under recipients, you will go to contacts and then click add a contact. Make sure mail user is selected here and you can create a mail user for your on-premise user. I'll create for this one, Bob Ross. So the first name is Bob, last name is Ross. And once you will add a domain in Office 365, that domain will reflect under accepted domains. You can check in Exchange Admin Center under mail flow and then accepted domains. So that is the reason I can select this domain as a domain suffix for this user. So let's assign password. Click add. So the mail user is created. Now the next prerequisite is, let me refresh it. So this mail user is created. The next prerequisite is, we will update MX record for our domain in public DNS. So as of now, my MX record for on-premise exchange server is pointed to mail.office365concepts.com. We need to point this MX record to EOP or exchange online protection. So you can go to DNS management and then go to manage DNS. It will give you the MX value. Copy this value and paste it under MX record value. Click save. So this is updated to mail.protection.outlook.com. First, let's create outbound connector. In on-premise, you have two connectors, send and receive. In Exchange Online, you have two connectors, inbound and outbound. So let's create outbound connector first. 
So outbound connector will be from Office 365 to your organization's email server. If you want to create inbound connector, then it will be your organization's email server to Office 365. So let's create outbound first. From Office 365 to your organization email server. Click next. Here you can give it a name to on-premise, for example. Make sure this connector is turned on. Click next. Under use of connector, you will select for email messages sent to all accepted domains in your organization because we have already verified the on-premise domain in Office 365. So any user will send email to this accepted domain. This connector will trigger on that particular email. That is the reason we are using this option. So select the first option and go next. Under routing, you can use either the IP address of your exchange server or you can use mail.office365concepts.com. The one that you have entered in virtual directories. Go next. Here we will select any digital certificate or including self-signed certificates. Go next. Under validation email, we will use one of the on-premise user mailbox email address. Because Office 365 will check this email or will use this email to check connectivity with your on-premise exchange server. So type the email address, click plus, and then click validate. This connector has to be validated before you use it. If validation fails, in that case, you might have to troubleshoot. If this validation is completed successfully, that means the connector is created properly and you can use this connector to route emails from EOP to your on-premise exchange server. So the connector validation is successful. Here we can see the connection to mail.office365concepts.com succeeded. Now the next thing that we need to do is we need to create one inbound connector. So again, we will click add a connector. This time we will select your organization's email server to Office 365. Go next. Here we will give it a name. Let's say to EOP. Make sure connector is set to turned on. Under authenticating sent email wizard, you will select the second option that says by verifying that the IP address of the sending server matches one of the following IP addresses. And here you will type the external IP address of your exchange server. If you have multiple exchange servers, you can add multiple IP addresses. Click plus and go next. Click create connector. And this inbound connector is created. Now let's go to EXRCA and let's go to exchange server and let's perform inbound email flow. Because as I said, to receive emails from EOP, you do not have to create a receive connector. So the test is passed. That means we can receive emails to our exchange server. Those are routed from EOP. Now here you can see this time it is checking the MX record of Office 365. That is domain.mail.protection.outlook.com. So that means inbound mail flow is working. So let's go to on-premise exchange server and let's create send connector. Because as we discussed, to receive emails from EOP, we do not have to create a receive connector. Default front-end exchange connector, the receive connector will receive all the emails from EOP automatically. You don't have to make any changes in this connector. But in case of send connectors, yes, you need to create a new send connector. This send connector is already created that is sending emails to internet. So I'm going to disable this connector and we will create one new send connector through PowerShell. So the command that we are going to use is this new hyphen send connector. We will give it a name. Address space will be asterisk because we will be sending emails to all external domains. Then we will use the FQDN of the server we need TLS to be enabled. Within smart host, we will use the MX record for EOP for our domain, for office365concepts.com domain. If you are not sure what is your MX record for office365concepts.com or for your domain, you can go to office365 portal, DNS records, 
And from here, you can check the DNS records. If you want to copy MX record, you can click on MX and copy this value and paste this value here. Copy this command and let's run this command in PowerShell. So the send connector is created with name to EOP. And now let's test the email flow. Let's go to Gmail account and let me send one email to on-premise user. That is Bob Ross at office365concepts.com. Test email. And let's send this email. So let's go to Bob Ross mailbox. Let me minimize the PowerShell. So this email was sent by the connector validation. And this is the email that is sent from the Gmail user. Let's go to message header now. Let me copy this value and let's go to EXRCA. And let's click message analyzer. Paste the header. Now let's check this header. So this email was sent from Google server. Then this email was routed to Office 365. Here we can see mail.protection.outlook.com. And this is sent over TLS 1.2. From Office 365, this email was routed to on-premise exchange server. This is the fully qualified domain name of my exchange server. If you want to check the fully qualified domain name, you can simply go to PowerShell and run get hyphen exchange server pipe fl and look for fqdn so this is the fully qualified domain name of exchange server if you want to check the fully qualified domain name in other way you can go to properties and here you can see the full computer name that is fqdn so from office 365 this email was sent to Exchange Server. This is the private IP of Exchange Server. And then this email was delivered to the user mailbox. Now let's test the outbound email flow. So let's go to Bob Ross mailbox and click on new. And let's send one email to Gmail user. Test email test email and click send. Let's go to Gmail mailbox. So we have received the email from on-premise mailbox. Let's go to show original. Let me copy this email header. Let's go to EXRCA message analyzer and let's paste it here. Now let's check this header. So this email was sent from exchange.office365concepts.com. That is our on-premise exchange server. This is the internal IP of exchange server, and this is the external IP of our exchange server. From exchange server, this email was routed to EOP. That is mail.protection.outlook.com. That is MX record over TLS 1.2. And from Office 365, this email was sent to Google Mail server or Google server. And then this email was delivered to the recipient mailbox. So this is how you can integrate third-party email filtering solutions with your on-premise exchange server. If you are using EOP, you can use Mailflow rules, or if you have supported subscription, in that case, you can use Microsoft Defender for Office 365. That is security.microsoft.com. Under Microsoft 365 Defender, you can use threat policies like anti spam, anti phishing, anti malware, safe attachment, or safe links. You can configure these policies based on your requirement and you can trigger these policies on your email. So if you think that on premise exchange server email solution is not meeting your requirement, in that case, you can integrate any third party email filtering solution with your exchange server and you can protect your emails from malicious contents. In the next video, we will talk about Edge Transport Server. We will understand why do we need Edge Transport Server and how to set up Edge Transport Server in our on-premise exchange organization. So that is all for now. I will see you all in the next video. Thank you guys. 
Thank you for your time. Take care.